duo I am joined by today, uh, well, we were in a very beautiful conversation uh, following the world premiere of Baby Crosto at the UK Asian Film Festival. Delighted to have Jessel Shah, the director, and the lead actor, Neil Bhupalam. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Anuj. So, guys, you've had your world premiere. Um, now, this film, Jessel, has been with you since you were assisting uh, Rakesh Om Prakash Mehra on Tufan. Yes. So, tell me, from the idea that you had in your head to now seeing the film on the big screen, how do you feel? I feel absolutely magical, amazing. Like, uh, you know, because uh, just to have an idea and uh, then making it come to life, it takes so much of work, so much of teamwork, you know, like my entire cast, crew, my producers. There are so many things that are involved to kind of make a film, you know. Uh, almost 200 people like yeah. working on, you know, uh, as you know, me and Neil, Neil was telling me the other day, like yesterday, you yeah. know, that how yeah. it starts from an idea and how then, you know, people come together and, you know, bring their own experiences, own values, own perceptions to the table and how they kind of, you know, help you uh, mount that idea into a film. And, you know, um, I think to just see that and 200 people working because you just, Neil just told me that, you know, you just have an idea and yeah. then there are so many people working on it and then suddenly it comes to life. Yeah. I think it's a wonderful feeling to have. Mm -hmm. Neil, you play a character who is pretty much trapped in a bottleneck situation. Uh, you're no stranger to that and you're no stranger to the milieu of Goa. Yeah. Um, for you to revisit this aspect of bottleneck situations as a character, the vulnerability that you perhaps bring to them, how familiar yet new was it for you in many ways as well? Wow, you're going to get a lot out of us on film, me, show me. Um, That's the whole point. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah it's, um, it's nice. Um, acting for me is um, therapeutic. It's not therapy, but it's therapeutic. And to be able to give, give, a, give a character, uh, Jaco, which has got these various layers. And yes, you're right, he's, I'm trapped. Uh, I'm no stranger to it because I feel like life keeps me trapped. Um, <laughs> and Goa, yeah. I love Goa. We keep doing family holidays away. We got a bit of a tribe in Goa. So um, what I did do was um, borrowing from the structure that I know before our work day, I would go for a dip in the sea and then scooter to set. Um, and it is a different every time you're starting from scratch. Mm -hmm. So it's a different kind of Goa when you're shooting for a story like Baby Cresto. I have done one before which is called Smoke, which mm. you had mentioned earlier. Um, and that was a different kind of Goa. So that was South. No, we were in the South and that was North. But even if it was all the same area, it would still be different. Mm. I may not be able to articulate why and how, but it just is. The world that you live in in your head, the season that you record in, uh, that we film in, it's just, uh, and we were doing night shoots, a lot of night shoots. So they were, they were long days, man. They were long days, but we managed to really have. When you finish the day and you're like, ah, acha kaam kiya, and now we have another one tomorrow, but we just crash, eat, crash, and then do it again tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Correct. Now we spoke about in the Q and A. Uh, it was heavily inspired by Stephen King. It almost seems like your love letter to the author. <laughs> in many ways, um, for you to adapt your love for Stephen King, but then also customize it with the Indian cinema landscape, how difficult or challenging was that for you? Okay, so Anuj, uh, I would, uh, I mean, see, I'm obviously I've grown up, watch, I've been exposed to different kind of works and, you know, Stephen King, of course, thank you so much for, uh, you know, uh, I don't know what to say, but thank you so much Enjoying for, that. you know, yeah, uh, saying that. It means a lot. And uh, so when we we watch so much of, so many movies and, you know, uh, because, I, you know, um, it leaves some impact or influence on you, right? And uh, you don't know how it's working, you know? 
un- subconsciously you don't you have no idea right mm. so when we were drafting baby crust it was just coming naturally to us like you know we were crafting scenes individually but when i was executing baby crust too, you know mm. i think there you will see a lot of uh, in terms of the visual treatment like you know if you see like those top camera shots and mm. stuff that we've taken the color palette that we've chosen i think that somewhere was it was subconsciously playing you know like mm. you you always borrow from uh, you know uh, you get inspired and you know you kind of you feel it's just there you know mm. in in your aesthetics in your creativity it just comes naturally to you like you don't have to really put in an effort or you know kind of feel ki are no you know i have to i have to go to that film or i have to take it from there it just comes like when you're making decisions you know you don't even know you subconsciously you're making so many decisions right yeah. so you don't know uh, where that decision came from and it's not like everybody says oh i made this decision on my own no it's mm. a it's a collect it's a collection you make a decision because there are there's causes and effects you know so yeah. you make that decision and i think that decision is highly influenced it cannot just be very independent it cannot exist independently on its own mm. right and i think neil the beauty about you uh, as an actor is that i find that we i mean again you bring vulnerability i think in all the characters you do for sure i mean even if we look at shaitan right your character in that um you know he's quite a don't give a f about anything type of a person but at the same time there's also this sense of gentleness that you bring masaba masaba another case in point you know there's a certain softness but you also have this very rough exterior a very almost dapper like attitude yeah. tell me how do you manage to not get yourself caught up in so many different layers of you as a person whilst you're acting and perhaps even in reference to baby crosto as well hey, well you know i come from a theater background where we for us like our director is god yeah that's the training i remember well my director only telling me this but <laughs> You, the writer that's like your bible the text the every comma every full stop every dot 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 is there's a reason why the writer has written it like that so mm. so that's the training i've had mm. when i started venturing out into more camera work um you see that there are greater powers that play as well sometimes you know your director is managing a lot of things but that's that's their uh, axe to grind For me I've still been trained like what does my director want out of this scene and this day if I have some sort of pitch I will uh, sort of say you know what about this or what about that and it's never completely shot down in my experience it's it's tweaked mm-hmm. my director will sort of like can see that okay you've thought about this last night when you were reading your lines so maybe this can go in there or that away and and for uh for baby crash too of course we had our producers our, our peeps from golden ratio over there uh also you know not really interfering at all just letting us do what we wanted yeah. to do and jessel was very sure on what i liked was she said just stick to the line mm. like i don't speak much in this film i mean i speak when required yeah, you know true. and Yeah and the hindi is also very it's it's a go in hindi it's a mere ko mangta hai yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> kai, you know this it's very different uh, flavor of uh, hindi yes and by mistake if a proper line comes out then we got to do another take <laughs> yeah. and this thing so but here's where if you commit to the line mm-hmm. which was written and redrafted and done you know when the writer was putting it you will get it free mein aa jayega hmm. you don't have then you got costume to dress you up that's a whole different team yeah so all you're doing is just being present over there following the instructions that you got to do and just pay attention because you know yeah. you don't want to walk into the furniture or the camera yeah true <laughs> but i think uh, i mean supriya patak has done such a legendary job a stellar job in this film I could not recognize her. I mean she's obviously no stranger to playing antagonist. She's done it before, but here it's so layered and unfortunately she's not here with us to sort of speak about it. But again the sort of <laughs> the sort of layers that it's there it's so wonderful. Um the gray characters like I mentioned as well in our Q&A, they're emerging. 
And we're also seeing almost middle-aged sort of characters as grey as well. Yeah. Like, for example, there was a film called Brahma Yogam, which released in Malayalam, mm. um, with the legendary Mamuti in. Um, we had Baby Reindeer on Netflix. Um, and then, obviously, Hira Mandi. So there's so many grey characters coming. For you, as a, as a director, to present those grey characters without necessarily force-feeding the audience or trying to justify it, did you find it a tricky job to do? Because at the end of the day, you know, you're just there to tell the story and to decide or not is the audience's job. Mm, okay, yeah. So, uh, I mean, I was not seeing it whether it's grey, black, white. I, it was not structured in my mind like that. I was simply writing a character, the internal world. And what that internal world is the way, you know, our thoughts, perceptions, and, you know, how we feel, you know. Because, see, for example, uh, me and you will always see this chair very differently. It will never be the same, right? So we were trying to kind of get into the internal world. And then what action that character will perform and with the motivation he or she has, you know. So uh, I don't know if the actions were good, bad, grey. We were not thinking in on those lines to be very honest mm. um, if they want to be good if you perceive them to be good they're good you perceive them to be bad they're bad you perceive them to be gray they are mm. gray they are your friend enemy whatever mm. relative whatever you want to perceive them as you can so we were not uh, thinking so written and directed pre without judgment is what you're trying to without say. the judgment yeah mm. we were not having any judgment we were just writing the characters and we were trying to see what is that motive, you know, mm. like if you see baby has a certain motive, Vasu has a certain motive, Neil has a, I mean, Jaco has a motive and, you know, uh, what is their internal world like, you know, like baby, if you see her internal world, you know, it's it's very chaotic. On the outside, it's very prim, but, you yeah. know, in the inside, it's not that, like, you see her from the exterior, you think everything is fine, everything is normal, you mm. know, uh, appearances can be deceptive, right? So yeah, I mean, uh, we were just, we were actually taking references from like how we are seeing uh, people like in our day to day life, we see somebody smiling and you know, we're like, okay, he's fine. But no. we don't know if he, we, till the time you ask the question like, hey, hi, how are you doing? You know, mm. are you okay? So we were not drafting gray characters or black and white. We were just trying to people. write people and you yeah. know. Yeah. But there's a loneliness that's common in all of them. Yes. Which I kind of found very interesting as Thank well. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Yes. So I think a final uh, question I guess to you, Neil. Um, it's a bit of a heavy question. Split into two Bring parts. it. <laughs> yeah. I think you can <laughs> definitely master it for sure. Um, but look, I think it's great. I think the conversation about uh, cinema exceeding mediums, whether it's OTT, whether it's the theatrical run, they're obviously ongoing at the moment. Yeah. Uh, for a film like this, obviously, it's currently having its world premiere here at UCAF. But how do you feel films nowadays, especially when they are independent, without it having some sort of a mainstream or commercial feel, how do you feel they find their audiences now? How do you feel satisfied with the way films are sort of crossing over now? It's a yes and no situation for me. Uh, I am satisfied tremendously to be able to uh, have um, married my stage uh, experience with my film craft in a film like Baby Crasto and show it off over there and get that opportunity. So that is a win on, on a self, on just my as an artist thing. Uh, yes, you always want more people to see your, it's like, you know, having a cupcake shop. Mm. You yeah. make cupcakes, yeah? And you want people to come and buy it or eat it, you know, and sometimes you give a person a free cupcake, yeah. you know. Yeah. But you want the cupcakes that you made to like yeah. finish and for it's the okay, day. okay, even whatever the experience is, yeah. but at least, you know, just have a look at it. Yeah, yeah that's so, it, so yeah. that's it, this audience, yeah, and yes, the mediums will change. Uh, so it's, it's good and it's not so good also. Yeah. And we don't, we can't really control as artists and filmmakers and storytellers what the industry and that, that sort of channel yeah. is going to be because we are at the mercy of those channels, mm. you know? But it almost seems, sorry, I'm just wanting to sort of jog a bit of your thoughts here because I feel like 
what's happened now is that realism, I mean, back in the day when even when Supriya Ma'am began her career, yeah. realism was cinema. It was, the lens was literally just a fly on the wall. Yeah. But here I feel realism is becoming a proactive way of trying to make it through the mainstream. It's forced, it's not natural. It's like, a big tick box ban chuka hai commercial films ke acha mene real cinema bhi kiya hai. You know, so it's that kind of concern that I was having and whether you resonate with that. I, l I look, man, thanks for bringing this up because I believe no matter how real it is, it's not real. <laughs> it's not real. You know the story. You know what that person's going to say. It could look real. Yes, realism, but it's, it's still, f it's a sound and light show, man. Mm. That's what it is. And it is the times. Uh, at some point, people liked uh, certain like over-the-top kind of cinema, you know. And it's also the mediums of technology. Earlier, you had cameras that couldn't come so close to you. Mm. So obviously, you're going to put a, all your players in a in a position, and someone's going to talk like that because they can't move the camera. It's going to take time. So mm. so then you, if you see older cinema, you see the. Some of the actors, their body movements, are, I mean, it's a bit weird. It's a bit unnatural. Mm. Now you have technology, like we just got rigged up to really micro thing, the cam Sony camera we're on is this kind of portable, yeah? yeah? Mm. So then that adds to your grammar of performance. Right. Mm. And that's why we've got the realism. And now to do over the top things seems mm -hmm. to be a little more of an effort. Right. No, very well said. Now, on a final note, obviously you've got the film, you know, doing its festival runs and obviously it's a very, very beautiful film. I really enjoyed watching it. What's next for you and for you? Go ahead, you start. Take over the world, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <even> that. <laughs> yeah, of course. Just going to take over the world. Yeah, that's what's next for me. Jessa, you've already taken over. I meant by projects, by the way. Oh, yeah, <laughs> projects. I got, I'm, I'm doing something with Maddox, uh, very interesting, called Chava. Uh, oh, yeah, our Vicky hero Kaushas. is Vicky Kaushas. He's, he's, you know, he's, he's, he's a great mate in it. He's good. He's, he's, he's one of our country's finest. I'm, I'm very fond of him. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Lakshman Uttekar is our director. It's a mammoth thing. And then like, you know, there was a copious, my work for the film is done. They're still uh, filming mm. as we speak. Uh, and then we're going to do King Lear. Uh, wow. in Bombay with, uh, it's going to be Mr. Nasiruddin Shah's oh, Lear. Yeah. Amazing. So that's going to open in November in Juhu, Prithvi. Oh, great. Great. What about you, Jessa? Like, I guess your focus must be just on this project right yes, now, right? Yes, yes. At the moment, yes, it's on Baby Cross too to kind of, maybe we'll do some more festivals and looking at a worldwide release and an India release. Uh, so yeah, we the focus will be on that. But yeah, I am done writing my next film. And uh, yes, I'll I'll be yeah now taking it to the market. Yeah, fantastic. Well, on that note, Jessel and Neil, thank you so much, and thank uh, you. congratulations once again on Baby Cross. Yeah, thank you so much so for having us. Thanks yes. so much. Thank Always you. fun to hang out. Yeah, same here. So much. Yeah.